Hi, my name is Lauren Diapoli, and this is a presentation for APN 620 regarding Jamaican food and culture. So some of the things that I'll be discussing in this presentation are, are the historical effects on Jamaican culture, some of the traditional Jamaican foods and cultural practices that have developed, and some of the health beliefs and the current concerns for Jamaicans and Jamaican Americans. Jamaica was once inhabited by the Spanish, and when the Spanish came, they brought all different kinds of animals and plants to the island. They brought cattle and pigs and different kinds of uh, fruit trees and plants that were not indigenous to Jamaica. Unfortunately, though, they forced the Jamaican natives into slavery. Disease and genocide wiped out a large portion of the Jamaican population. Then the British came and they colonized Jamaica and they brought African slaves and they really made a vast sugar plantation uh, out of the island. Very profitable because they were not paying for labor. After slavery was abolished, Chinese and Indian people were brought to Jamaica to do cheap labor. Numerous cultural integrations occurred, as you can see, and that really gave Jamaica hybrids of different religions, and it brought cultural traditions from around the world, also developing a unique culinary taste and flavors from all around the globe. So even though Jamaican Americans might eat an American style diet now, there are still a lot of Jamaican foods and dishes that are very popular for Jamaican Americans. And Jamaica has a very rich cultural history with a lot of uh, foods that are pretty well known. Beef patties are uh, pictured right here. They kind of have a flaky baked crust and these are specifically filled with ground beef, but they're made with all different kinds of, of fillings. They could have chicken in them or rice and peas, um, a bunch of different vegetables. And that's something that's common for Jamaicans to have for lunch, similarly to us having a sandwich. This is barbecued jerk chicken. And it's either roasted or, you know, sometimes baked. But the, the specific thing that makes a Jamaican is the jerk seasoning. A lot of Jamaican food is very spicy and has a lot of flavor to it. And this is something that is very notably from Jamaica. And then something that's not common at all in America is uh, raw sugar cane. Um, since it's so prevalent in Jamaica, it really is used by lots of people in Jamaica. They just chew on it like candy. Uh, I have honestly never seen it here in America. and. I live in New York where there actually is a Jamaican population. I might not have ever been looking for it, but this is what it looks like. So I split this up into uh, main courses and some common side dishes, and then down here in this uh, brownish color, uh, just some seasoning. So some typical main courses that are common in Jamaica are salt fish which is like a salted fish, either cured cod or kippered herring. And it typically is served alongside a key, which I have right here. That's the Jamaican national fruit, which is actually a yellow buttery. I'll show you, it's uh, actually right here. It's the, the fleshy part here is like a buttery yellow uh, flavor. And it kind of turned into something that to me looks like scrambled eggs. Part of it is toxic. so. Uh, apparently it's illegal in America, but in Jamaica, it's very prevalent. Some other things that they may have as a main course are fried fish, as I mentioned before, patties, turtle soup, pepper pot, which is pork or beef with greens, cow foot and goat head, oxtail soup, liver. Uh, Manish water is actually supposed to uh, have something to do with good luck and is frequently served at weddings, I read. Um, and then curried goat with, I put in quotations, rice and peas because it's actually rice and kidney beans, but that's actually something they make for holidays and special occasions is curried goat and 
rice and peas is apparently a very common side dish. Rundown is stew, but they use a coconut milk stock instead of like what we would use a, a broth here. Uh, this kayu is, is made differently in different cultures, but in Jamaica, it's um, cooked greens with garlic and spices, usually kale or spinach, something like that. And they have dumplings, plantains, a lot of starchy and tuberous, uh, uh, tuber vegetables, sorry, are served. Potatoes, um, uh, cassava, which is actually how they make bami. Bami looks like a pancake, but it's actually a flatbread. It's actually pictured here as well. Here's bami. It's a flatbread made out of uh, cassava, which is similar to a potato. And they have sandwiches on hard dough breads or pastries and cocoa bread. They call it cocoa bread, but it's really just a soft, sweet roll. And it's not actually made with coconut. But they do have a lot of coconut, like a lot of tropical areas. Coconut juices are consumed a lot. Um, they have a lot of variety of tropical fruits we don't have. And as I mentioned here, here are some of the common spices that they use. The pictures that I showed you. So for breakfast, they would have a main course and a side, typically. And here is pictured the aki and saltfish. So this is actually what the aki looks like. As I said, it looks a lot to me like scrambled eggs. And this is actually in this picture served with coleslaw, which is something I, I found commonly when I look for this. And they might eat something like codfish, codfish fritters, something like, you know, fried fish, corned beef, or some sort of other type of uh, fish stew. And they eat also breakfast patties and pastries. They also have uh, something called breadfruit, which is a fruit. Um, and, you know, as I had mentioned, starchy sides. Lunch is pretty similar. Um, they call their sandwich shops patty shops, and they get their sandwiches on cocoa bread. But in those patty shops also have, you know, patties that are filled with maybe curry chicken, beef, vegetables. Here actually is a picture of the curried goat with rice and peas. As I mentioned, it's kidney beans. And uh, as I said, this is something that they may have on Christmas or on a special occasion, maybe like a nice family Sunday dinner. And some other popular items are steamed fish, curried shrimp, stew pork. They season their foods with something else called scotch bonnet peppers. And there's a scotch bonnet hot sauce uh, that comes from Jamaica. Dessert is typically some kind of fruit. And it might also be a pastry that has fruit in it, uh, like a plantain tart or banana tart. And they may have some sort of tropical fruit like star apples or guava in coconut cream or cornmeal pudding, sweet potato pudding, or small coconut cakes called totos. This picture is of the beautiful northern mountains of Jamaica, and this is actually the most popular source of Blue Mountain coffee. And Jamaicans drink their, their coffee instant, usually with condensed milk or condensed sweetened coconut milk. Similarly to Americans, Jamaicans might boil, season, bake, or dry their foods. They roast food and also barbecue. Rastafarian Jamaicans avoid cooking with metal, so they don't use aluminum or cast iron or anything like that. They try not to consume any foods that have been canned or dried. They limit additives and artificial colorings and they use clay or wooden cooking pots or cutlery. They try to eat a more uh, whole food diet. Some of the cultural traditions that Jamaica has is, are really rooted in African religions, and one of them is Nine Nights, which is a tradition that's meant to provide comfort to the relatives of deceased individuals. And they celebrate this night with uh, maybe a fish fry, and they have bami, and they celebrate with white rum. There are a lot of Christians in Jamaica, and there are a lot of Christian Jamaican Americans. And so they celebrate Christmas. And they have things like we do, roast ham or roast beef. And then they also, this would be a, an opportunity to have curried goat, as I mentioned, is something they have on special occasion. Or they might have oxtail some cow foot, um, and they also make a Christmas style cake that's made with fruit that's been soaked in rum, and they'll 
eat this cake with a holiday drink called sorrel. It's a drink that's warm and it's made with hibiscus and cinnamon and cloves with sugar and rum and some citrus peel. Since there are Christians that are, you know, in Jamaica and also Jamaican Christians here in America, they celebrate Easter as well. And that's usually a, a fish dish. Here I have a picture of fish espirich. I think I may have said that correctly, I hope. And this is a whole fish. They kind of pick the meat off the bones. And it's served here with sliced onions and vegetables. That's typically how it's made with a, a broth sort of made out of garlic and ginger and Jamaican spices. Also on Easter, they make a Easter spice bun, which is spicy bread that's served with cheese. So a brief history of their health beliefs um, are kind of rooted in the unfortunate reality that there was slaves living in horrendous, severe conditions. And this led a lot of Jamaicans and people who were living in Jamaica, either for, you know, cheap labor or brought against their will for slavery, they relied on a lot of medical knowledge and practices from their homelands. So there are a lot of folk medical practices rooted in African religious beliefs. But because these folk medical practitioners had to operate in secret, it did limit the regulation of these approaches which led to the practice of herbal medicine on uh, shared resources, farming communities where slaves would help their communities sustain themselves and keep themselves healthy. So they would seek medical attention from neighbors and, and family members who were maybe midwives or herbalists. And also through the practice of obey, which is a sorcery or spiritual power that is rooted in African religious beliefs. In the early 1920s, the Rockefeller Foundation provided financial assistance that promoted social welfare and the health care of Jamaicans. And this program increased their health care education, dental care. It promoted social hygiene product, projects, nutrition education, and promoted family planning. And it provided some Western medical treatments for illnesses that previously were plaguing Jamaica, uh, Jamaicans. And it dramatically improved uh, healthcare conditions. So today it seems that many Jamaican Americans consult both Western medical professionals as well as resort to folk medical treatment for many common illnesses. One of the kind of folk things that's been passed on uh, through generations in Jamaica and in Jamaican culture is a treatment for cold and flus using bush teas. But unfortunately, um, the use of bush teas mask the symptoms of other serious illnesses. Uh, bush teas can uh, create insulin confusion um, and also people uh, can, can create a misdiagnosis for diabetes. But they also drink teas made from breadfruit. This is the breadfruit tree, and this is what the breadfruit looks like on the tree. Um, and they use this tea to treat high blood pressure. And it's actually so effective that it can cause a dangerously low drop in blood pressure. So, of course, this creates a concern that um, Jamaicans and Jamaican Americans need to integrate both traditional health beliefs that are rooted in folk medicine that can be very effective but also include Western medical practices and Western medical professionals as part of their, their health team. Because obesity is a major public health issue for Jamaican and Jamaican Amer Americans, we really need to consider this by addressing all of the dietary, genetic, and environmental factors that affect each individual, because we do know that mental and physical health is largely determined by a variety of social and economic factors. Here are the references that I used to create this presentation. And here are the references as well for all of my photographs. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.